Hola, guapas, and welcome to episode seven of the Hola Guapa podcast. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm your host, Nisha Batesh. I'm also the founder and creative at Ola Guapa, a digital community of almost 10,000 artists and creatives from all over the world. A blog, a website, an online shop, and most recently, this podcast. On this podcast, we highlight creative conversations by sharing the real stories, tips, and tricks the artists in this community have found on their journey to success. Okay, so I'm honestly freaking out a little bit over here because I finally get to introduce you to OG Ola Guapa artist and now an Instagram friend, Dahlia Dindashi. Dahlia started her creative journey by pursuing a traditional career in journalism and photography, only to find herself burnt out before she even got started. Pivoting her skill set alongside the sensational growth of Instagram, she listened to her gut and transitioned to a less stable, less traditional, and less valued role of being a content creator. And that's when everything finally started clicking into place. Her personal work has always inspired me. Scrolling through her feed, it's clear that Dahlia is navigating her own journey growing up as a Muslim Arab American woman. She explores her identity by navigating the depths of who she is spiritually, religiously, and culturally through photography and writing, letting us all in through her lens and inviting us along for the ride. On this episode, we get into topics like what truly goes into being a content creator, juggling freelance work with an agency career, being resourceful AF, and being able to find ways to apply your unique skill set, no matter what they are, to create and conquer your dream career. We also touch on topics like judgment, family, connection, and finding your place in the world. To be honest, we really go everywhere in this one, and I personally found this conversation both very interesting and inspiring. So without any further wait, help me welcome the one and only Dahlia Dindashi to the show. Hi, I'm Dahlia. Um, I am a creative content producer and photographer, so that sort of means I do everything from taking photos, uh, I do some graphic stuff, I do some writing, I've done some social media work, so I, I kind of do a, a lot of different things, but definitely within the realm of like content production and content creation is what I do. Awesome. So I want to start at the beginning of your creative journey and, and just tell us how you sort of became this multifaceted creative that you are today. How did it start? Do you, was there a memory in time that you can, that you can pinpoint or? I remember being very young, like probably 11 or 12, where I got like a really shitty, small Sony, like point and shoot camera. I think my uncle or someone had bought it for me. And I was like, you know, I, was, I mean, you're young at the age of 12. You don't really know like what's going on. And I remember it started out very small where like, I would just like to take pictures. And then it was like learning how to take photos of myself, which sounds so like stupid, but I realized that it was the thing that I felt most comfortable with at such a young age, like photographing myself in my room and what that looked like. And I always put like makeup on and I set up like little scenes with like paper and all these things. And now I think it's so funny because at the time it seems like something so small and futile. And now I realize like that's sort of what got me into photography. And also at a very young age, I used to write a lot of like novel, like not, I'm saying novels, like novels, right. But like I used to write a lot of like books or stories and I would make up a lot of things. Then I had all these journals and binders. And I used to think that I wanted to be like a novelist or something or, or past it. But I think definitely from a young age, I, I was looking for things where I could have a creative outlet because I felt like, it sounds like a stupid emo song, but like misunderstood. And I didn't know like where I was, you yeah. know, what I wanted to do or where my place was in my family. And I just think that photography and writing stories is really where it started for me from that young sort of age. Yeah. Um, did you, this is something that we kind of always touch on is like in these uh, podcast interviews is like, did you have a formal education and can you talk to us about why or why not? Yes. Yeah, so kind of, um, I went to like a public school very young in the States and when I moved to Dubai, I went to like an international school, which was really what I think kind of gave me this like global perspective of people and what life was. And how I old mean, were you when you, when you moved? I think I was eight. And then I left when I was 18. And then when I was 18, I moved to the States. I moved back to Texas to go to college and I went to UT Austin. So that was sort of my college experience. And then after college, I worked for a bit and then I went and did a three month certificate program at Miami ad school in New York. Okay. 
And was all yeah. of your studies and your job after college, was it all creative based or did you uh, study something else and did you work in a different field? So when I was in college, I was a journalism major and I think it just was because I thought I wanted to write, but honestly, writing and journalism now and all these things are so like, they're just always changing. And just because you study writing doesn't mean you're going to be someone who writes in a magazine. Like I worked after college, even though when I was in college, I did a lot of magazine work. I did photography and I did writing. I did a lot of editing and I had interned um, at the Daily Dot, which was it's like an online internet publication about internet news, like very fun. Um, for my full-time job after college, I worked in a newsroom for like local news. And it was like, just very boring for me as a person. I understand that these jobs are very important. They give us the news, they keep you informed. But for me, I'm just like such an extrovert and I love to just be doing things. So working in a newsroom where I was writing was like, draining the life out of me and I didn't want to write anymore which was I was like what is the point of me doing this when the thing that I had a passion for went to college for I studied I even did like photography and video for journal journalism and I hated it so I quit and um with actually thinking I was moving to New York didn't happen and then I freelanced for about a year and a half doing photography. And then I sort of changed, I did some freelance writing, but I sort of like, it transformed into more of like copywriting and social and stuff like that, just because people were like, oh, you can do photo and writing. Like, can you like essentially do our whole Instagram feed or can you create a month's worth of content with copy or photos? So it kind of transformed like that very naturally. So I guess technically it was always in the creative space, even though like, I don't, I mean, of course you have to be creative to be a journalist, but for me, I didn't feel like I was exercising my creativity when I was writing at that time. Um, so yeah. This is something that I feel like keeps coming up again and again with, um, you know, these creative conversations where it's like you go to school to study something that you think will provide like a stable career. And in turn, when you end up actually doing it, it, it sort of like strips you of your creativity. And I don't know if that's because when you're in school, you, you're you nurturing it so much and you have like all these dreams and aspirations to fulfill um, your vision while you're sort of learning all of these new skill sets. And then when you get out of college, it's almost like you get a job and it falls flat of your expectations. You have this prestigious title or you're working for a company and you have this like so-called stability, but you're not happy. Yeah, I, I definitely think that. I think some people are very lucky. They go to college or get a higher education or whatever, and they study something that they really are passionate about and it, they don't burn out. I don't, I, I mean, personally, I don't think I've met someone like that, but <laughs> I think that especially in creative fields, people, I think there's a stigma a lot of times for, for people who don't know, like even when I was in college, like, oh, com, the comm school, the communication school is a joke. Or like, you're just being like creative and artsy fartsy, like that's not going to be a job or like you won't be able to get a job. And I think people who go into these majors, you know, I think that we see things a little bit differently because we do, we do think that there is potential in these, I mean, people don't realize that you can have a job in this or that you can love your work. And I just think that in this case, I went into journalism because I love to write. It was a passion. And I think, like you said, it ended up being what made me change my career ultimately. You know, I think that we have like this, like the rose, whatever, the rose tinted glasses when we're in college and you're in this like environment where you're thriving and you're, you're experimenting, you're trying these new things. And, oh, I was part of this club and I did this magazine <laughs> and I, you know, I was like having yeah. fun. Yeah. And then I, the world is just not that fun. Like, I'm just being honest. I think you can make it fun, but I think that like once you kind of really get into the workforce, even something that's supposed to be creative, like, there are restrictions in everything. And I just think that's the reality of work as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's a good point. Like at the end of the day, you know, you can have, you can have your dreams and your goals and want to work for yourself and, and, you know, fulfill this creative vision. But at the end of the day, it is work no matter right. what. Totally. And so when you sort of made this transition to do more freelance and all in a sudden you're getting, um, you know, contacted to do like social feeds, is this when Instagram really started flourishing or like how, how talk, talk to us a little bit about like that transition and what that time was like. It's so funny because I mean, um, for me, I, when I was in college, like we used Instagram, you know, but I never like took a 
class or anything. Whereas now, like, obviously when people are in the communication school, like social media is a class, Instagram right. and like this type of marketing is a class. I mean, to be fair, I, my major wasn't marketing, it was journalism, journalism. So we were writing articles. So right. I understand that could have been like also why I didn't have that education. Um, but I think that when I got into social, I was using Instagram and Twitter just like everybody else. And then I had to kind of like teach myself more about like, what are the best practices? What's effective on these platforms? Why you, we use these platforms versus this. And it was all very self-taught. Like I used Linda, I used YouTube. Um, and I just like kind of finessed my way because I, it's not that I didn't think that I was talented. Like I knew I had the skills to right. learn and I knew that I had writing and copywriting experience, copy editing experience. I knew that I was a photographer with a good eye. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely not like a marketing, like, like professional or like someone who like knows all about marketing, but I was like, I can teach myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that when people saw my work and, um, a lot of it was just through word of mouth, like, Oh, she's done this. She's done that. She's worked here. She's, you can see her work. And I, I was always very adamant about like posting work I did on Instagram, even if it wasn't something so fancy, like my feed isn't curated, my whatever, you know, like I always had a website that I kept up to date for the most part. And I think it's really just about being able to show people what you're capable of doing, even if you haven't done it yet. And I think for me, that was something that really worked in my benefit. It was like, okay, I don't have, you know, I don't have marketing experience, but I have content experience and I taught myself how to connect those things. So I think a lot of it was about learning and challenging myself to learn and just be like, there's no reason why you can't do this just because I didn't get a degree in this. Um, and it was learning about how to apply these skills that I had and these, you know, these things that I could do into something a bit different. Um, I think that's kind of how it shifted for me and how that learning sort of started. Absolutely. I mean, that's such a good tip is like, okay, I don't have this, but I do have this and here's how I can apply it to, you totally. know, what, what you're asking of me. And like you said, everything, everything now is on the internet. So, um, you know, even for me, like when I'm asked, can you do this? My answer is just always yes, because if I can't teach myself at least how to get started by watching three hours of a YouTube video, I mean, come on, you know, you have to get resourceful. You, you have to get resourceful, right? And if, and I just always say, if you're not willing to get resourceful, then it's not something you actually want to do. And that's Absolutely. That's fair. a good point too. Yes. Yeah. So take us to current day. So um, I want to sort of hear, I know that you work um, for a company and then you also do freelance. So I want to hear about um, both and then, you know, sort of how you're, how you're working. So yeah, I work right now at an agency here in New York City, which um, long story short, I think that it all sort of happened like very just, I'm not going to say by chance, but I definitely all sort of fell into place because one year ago today I had no job I had no money I was freelancing but very little and I was like I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do so uh we're definitely like in a completely different place which is good but I work for this agency and my job is as a social content producer so it's funny because it's kind of like what I was doing as a freelancer but now it's for like specific brands and projects versus like doing all these sort of things. And honestly, in this, in this, in the place of COVID working from home has been a challenge with this job, which I'll get to, but my day to day at my job is like creating graphic assets, for example, for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever that might be, but also like creating content, which means like photography. A lot of it is also photography. And I've had to like learn how to make an in studio in my living room sort of thing. Like this is where we've you know, this is where we've landed because we're not going into the office. I don't have a studio. I don't have production, whatever. So it's been a lot of like DIY, like, you know, putting paper on the wall, sticking it, you know, like it's, it's been a challenge, but <laughs> I think that that's why I got hired for this job. Like, Absolutely. And I, you know, like that was why, like, even when I interviewed for this job, part of my job was like, you had to come up with a, you have to take like a lifestyle photo. And I was like, oh shit. So I like got a bunch of things in my house and I like laid it on the floor and I took like a bird's eye view photo and they were like, this looks professional. And I was like, I did it in five minutes with a towel. So I was like, this is definitely, and I know that's why they hired me. Cause like, I'm scrappy. Like there's not a lot of things that I am, but I'm definitely scrappy. 
So yeah, that's like a big part of my day to day. So like making graphics, taking photos, coming up with content ideas for brands to put on their social, uh, brainstorming these ideas, like tying them to like strategies for brands. Like, okay, what is our strategic objective? What is like, whatever this launches or this new product that's coming out and then trying to connect the content to that so that it, you know, what also to connect to the goals and like, what's the purpose of this launch or these set of photos or graphics, graphics, et cetera. So my day-to-day -day job, I don't write copy or anything anymore. I'm making, I'm just like making the actual content that's being shared and ideating around it. And like I said, like connecting it back or helping connect it back to strategy and stuff like that. It's so funny because, you know, I, I work with Ola Guapa and, and the podcast and the website, but I also have a full-time career and that's, you know, the kind of, that's my wheelhouse too, is, is content creation and, um, you know, like creative brand management and making sure yeah. that like the aesthetics of a brand are on point and that story is being told and communicated properly. And then, like you said, that it's tying back to, you know, analytics and a strategy and a goal. And I think that what's fascinating is that this is a career. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy to think that like the other day, I'm not going to say too much, but the other day we were like making TikToks and I was like, this is a job now. Like TikTok <laughs> is a job, which like it is now too. Yeah. Like making stuff, the word yes. make, make content creation now is completely different than what it was even five years ago. I mean, I don't even know when I graduated college. Okay. Five. Yeah. We'll say five years ago. Like it's, it's just completely different. And the landscape is different. The opportunity to make stuff, the amount of resources is different. It's changing. So I literally just look sometimes and I'm like, yeah, this is my job. Like people, the thing that you see on Instagram is like part of my job. And I think that a lot of times, like we, we mentioned before, like people are like, well, this doesn't look that hard. And uh -huh. I'm like, yep. Yep. It's hard. That's, it's that's a misconception for sure. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I think that, um, and I'm sure you can agree with me 100%. I think that with people thinking content creation is a simple task, I just, I honestly think that people are ignorant and they don't realize how much goes into it. And I don't think it's the fault of anyone. I just think that because there are so many resources and ways to make content now, it's like accessible to everyone, which is good. It, it's good and bad. Good because everybody can do everything now. People can learn and people can create. And I think that's really amazing. I think on the other hand, though, some people can just make shit to make shit and it makes it look <laughs> lazy. And then they're like, well, I could do it. Anyone can do it. And I think that it, that devalues content creation. But at the same time, I'm like, that's, I mean, this is the landscape of what content is today. So I think that I mean, obviously there's so many different types of content. There's so many different reasons why people create content. And, you know, I think there's so many different mediums, but I think that if you're making content, I don't want to say in the right way or for the right reason, but I really do believe that. I think there's so much work that goes into it. You know, I think people don't think that like ideating because ideating is part of the creation process, or at least it's right before it. And I think people a lot of times forget that this exists and they're like, well, you're just like holding your phone and like, you're just like, you know, like taking video. And it's like, okay, Chad, it's not, but like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Think, yes. And it devalues the work that we've put in. Like, it's not easy to like set up a studio space and take these photos. And like, then you go hours of editing. And then the worst is when people ask you to do work for free or create content for free. And it's like, I can't believe I'm still getting asked that. Like literally the other day, somebody was like, can we collab? And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like, you want to collab by what? Like, no, you know, like it just devalues for me. That's, that's my issue with content being so accessible and easy to make now. Like I said, not because of that everyone can do it, but because now that everybody is doing it, it's like just devalued what good content is in my opinion. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I hear both sides of the conversation too. And I think like for me, it's either people get it or they don't get it. And I think that like with that, it's obviously like if you're a creative, you get it right. Like, um, and I think that 
there's the people in the middle, which I think are maybe the people that you're referring to, but then there's the people on the total opposite side who just say, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I need your help and I'm willing to pay you whatever I have to because I have no idea how to do this. I think like kind of like that trouble spot is, is the people in the middle who think that they can download an app and create beautiful content and you know like you said they can but uh with your work i think that there's a lot of intention and a lot of messaging and like you said there's a lot of strategizing um behind what you're putting out there yeah and of course like it's like funny because with with my day-to-day job it's like yes we do that but it's for brands and people can be like that's like shallow but i'm like okay well i have to have a job but I will say yeah. that it does still apply even when like your personal work, like even with you, with your personal work, it's the same thing. Like, you know, you're strategizing in different ways, whether that's like a personal project or like a graphic you're making for your Instagram or like your podcast. I think it just all applies and it's all applicable yep. in a good way. Yeah. So I want to talk about your personal work a little bit. So tell mm-hmm. us. <laughs> so um, I think... I think even though I know, like I said, that a big part of my job and the reason why I probably got my job was because I could take photos. I think that when I think about what that means to me is like, why, I just thought, I even thought about it yesterday. I was like, why is that? Like I looked at my camera, which my camera now is like a piece of garbage. It's so old. It barely <laughs> works. But I think about the way that it has sort of like changed my life in this very, you know, cliche way. But I think that the camera specifically is kind of what showed me the best way I could best express myself and to express the way I was feeling and, you know, all these things that were so like hidden inside of me or just even the confusion that I had growing up, like, who am I? What is my identity? You know, like being told by people, you know, like, you can't do this, you can't do that, or like, you should be this, you should be that, like, this is not what like an Arab girl would do or she would say, or this isn't like a career path you should follow because like you should be a doctor. Like I heard these things growing up endless amount of times from like hundreds of different people. And I think I was trying to find something and the camera just like came to me and it really just changed the, I just think it's changed my life. Like it's so stupid, but it really did. And I think when I look at my work now, like obviously like the, the, you know, my photography my work even if I'm not like working on like a project I mean I'm always like making zines and I'm always like putting my photos together like right now I'm working on a couple of things but besides that I still consider a day-to-day thing that I do work like if I take a photo outside and it's just like a one-off photo I still consider that like my personal work because I really think a lot about what part of me comes out in the in these photographs for example or when I'm writing, like my poetry and my prose is very, very personal. When you read it, it's like, oh, this sounds like Dahlia. And I think that these two sort of outlets of photography and writing are what told me it was okay to have a career in similar things almost. Um, and my personal work, like I said, it's always changing and it's never really this, the same but I, I do address often quite the same themes, you know, and I realize that, and, um, you know, I try to change it up, but like in my writing, it's always about being like a woman, being a, a woman that is Arab who grew up having to figure out who she was all the time, like having an identity crisis. I mean, I still have an identity crisis, but it's definitely like something I work on. I think we all have identity yeah. crisis. <laughs> Just like navigating being a woman who grew up Muslim and what being Muslim meant and what it means to me now and like what it meant to be daughter of immigrants and growing up in the Middle East and then moving here. And like, I think there were just all these things I was struggling with so hard. And I think it was, it even got harder after college because in college you're in your bubble. And I think that the bet, my work for me, at least it just start, it gets better and better in my eyes, because I think I'm understanding myself more and because I'm not afraid to say more now. You know, I think I used to hold myself back a lot. Like, you know, I shouldn't write this down or I shouldn't write this piece of poetry because it might be too like scandalous. Or like, what if my mom reads? Like now I don't give a shit, you know? But I think Mm -hmm. that was a big part of understanding the process and realizing like, 
if I want to be able to express myself 100% and to make work and make good work that matters and I can't be afraid to do so. So my work is very, you know, it's very personal to me because I think it's the best way I know how to explain myself. You know, like a photo, a photo that I take of like a woman's balcony, like I'm just remembering one, like a photo that I took of a woman's balcony in Lebanon to someone, like they're just like, it looks like clothes hanging from a, like she's doing laundry. Why the hell is that? And I'm like, to me, like there's a woman that lives in this house, like left the woman, there's like a story and I wonder what her life is like. And I wonder if she looks at me from the window, do I speak the same language as her, even if I look different? Like, I think there's, I think that's, these are just the ways for me that I was able to finally express my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think that there's just a lot of like depth behind your work and I think that you can feel it. And it's so interesting that you say like, as you've gotten to know yourself better, your work has become better. And also as you've been able to share that, I mean, it sounds honestly like you've been sharing for a while and you've been really good at that. And I know that like you mentioned, um, you know, at the beginning that you said that your um, career sort of fell into your lap, but you also said that you had been sharing your work on Instagram and creating your website and keeping that up to date for a long time. And I think that those two things aren't like a coincidence, you know, the more, yeah. and you share a lot of content. You yeah. Know, you're, I, you're I, always I always putting it out there. And I think it was, um, it's so dumb, right? But we're like, is it too much? Is it too little? Like, are people like being like, oh, she's so annoying. And like, I've definitely like lost followers. Like I, you know, it's even, but at the same time, I've gained a lot of new followers and I've met a lot of people, especially now like living in New York, yeah. um, who see my work and they're just like, wow, this is like a, like a breath of fresh air, you right. know, like, and I think it's just also like being an Arab American living you know, I mean, like we're a minority. Okay. So I think when we were able to find each other, it's almost like, tell me about your experience. And I'm not even just talking about Arabs, I, even just like minorities in general or kids who grew up as, you know, with immigrant families. I think it's really hard for us sometimes to admit that we want connection Absolutely. and intimacy with others like us, because we, we have like very similar experiences, you know, and I think that art and like my photography has, been able at least for me to introduce me to like so many people or people reach out to me like wow this was really a powerful image or like I've been there before but I never looked at it like that you know or like you know how did you see this car and you decide to take a photo of it I don't know like I just feel like for me it's it's made a lot of connections and even if like you know a year ago I felt like I wasn't doing enough and I was like why can't I like why am I not feeling fulfilled why can't things just like work themselves out and like maybe like you said it was kind of already happening and I just I just didn't know it because I just never felt like I was doing enough you know what right. I mean um and now I just feel that like really like your life is never going to be perfect and I don't think we should ever just be like okay I'm done you know mm -hmm. like I just feel like if you know we should continue to like strive to make stuff or be creative and I I one I one time heard this very young and I never forgot it and it was try to create at least one thing a day, even if it's very small, whether that's like writing down a sentence or scribbling something or taking a photograph, even if it's with your phone or, you know, coming up with an idea. Like I just, I remember hearing that and thinking it takes half a second. And I think that that in itself is something that I try to do every day now. And um, even if I don't have time to go take photos, because right now, like it's COVID, like I'm not meeting up with people to do a photo shoot. So it's more about like, what else can I do in my private time or in my small group of friends where I'm still being creative or working on my work that doesn't maybe require me or doesn't allow me to do what I used to be able to do, you know? Absolutely. It's almost like nurturing, um, you know, the creative in you is by continuing to like give yourself the gift of like, even if it's like you said, five minutes, it doesn't have to be within your exact medium. You don't have to do a full photo shoot if that's what you're used to on a day-to-day -day basis, right. or that's what really drives you. But like you said, it's even just like having the like uh, awareness to have, have a creative thought or have even just like a poetic thought that, you know, you want to scribble down and like giving yourself like that confidence to, to actually like take out a piece of paper and like, get it, get it down. Right. And isn't, and I, for me, sometimes I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. Like I'll think mm -hmm. of something and I'm like, this is too dumb to write it down. And I'm like, mm -hmm. who gives a shit? No one's even going <laughs> to read this paper. So yeah. I think that's a challenge too, right. To realize yeah. that like nothing is too, too small. 
Yeah. You know, I don't know. So. Yeah. How, what was like the response like, um, you know, from your community, from your family? I know you touched on it a little bit, but it sounds like you've been going through, and I think we're all going through, but you know, you have a totally different perspective and a different lens on it of just like, you know, fit your journey with self-identity. And I want to hear a little bit more about that. Um, and you know, how, like your, how your response has been from your community and then, you know, all these new connections that you've made. I think, um, for me personally, my, I mean, obviously I have great parents and mm-hmm. I have like amazing, I have like an amazing family and like, I'm very close with my siblings and my cousins. And, um, that's, that's always been like a support system that like a lot of people don't have. And I'm very grateful for me. My whole thing about growing up and like my identity crisis was that I think my parents, you know, they grew up in a place where things were very different than America and the United States and the Western world. My parents grew up you know, in Lebanon and Syria, where things were very different. They kind of grew up in a closed society. Um, My mom was like from a village where everybody knew your business and like, you know, everything was very private and like you had to be careful of who you hung out with and what you said and what you wore. And I understand, I understand that, you know, that was like a billion years ago as I know my mom, but like, I, I, I think it was part of that understanding where my parents came from and then them making a decision to move to America because they wanted a better life for us than they were able to have like growing up, you know, in the Arab world and just things that were happening. And um, I think a big part of that or what comes with that is like traditions and culture. And, you know, um, my family is Muslim, um, but they're not, I mean, we didn't really like grow up like going to a a mosque or no one in my family wears a hijab so I think it was like figuring out like where like how Muslim are you almost like what Mm -hmm. does it mean to me and I think that like with my parents there was growing up you know being like no dating no drinking no sex you know um you can't wear anything too short but at the same time my parents were not as um you know, like as traditional as other parents, it was like kind of in this weird middle space of figuring that out, you know? So I was, you know, growing up, I was like, where do I fit in? Do I, you know, do I believe in these things? Do I not? And I think I struggled a lot with finding my place. And then, um, uh, you know, then it was also became a conversation of like, what do you want to do in your life? Because there's like this, like, uh, this joke or stereotype that Arab families, or even like families that come from, you know, like, Asia or like the East are like, you have three job options. You're a doctor or you're a lawyer or an engineer. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it was like, Lord, my older brother's a doctor. So funny. So he's actually a doctor. Um, <laughs> and I think for, for me, it was like, my parents always wanted me to be a lawyer. And um, I even tried it. I took the LSAT. I took like a course and I remember doing that. And I literally was sitting in that room for how like literally seven hours. And I was go- going, who am I doing this for? And why am I doing this? Yeah. And I think um, that was something that sort of set me off. And I was like, I should be doing things for myself, not because my parents think it's right or people around me think it's right or wrong. Um, and then I think it, it was really challenging for me to not feel guilty about it. Like, you know, like I didn't used to drink and then I started drinking and I was like, oh, I'm going to hell. And then I, do I believe? <laughs> believe in hell you know like there's all these things that yeah. kind of and it's not about right or wrong it's like what does it mean to you um and I think that big part of it now that I'm older is having instead of being afraid of my parents and my family it's like having conversations like I'm like we I have trauma from growing up because I didn't know what the hell to do and I was scared and like da da da, da. and then they're like oh we didn't know or like talking to my my parents about like sexism in our culture and, you know, these sort of things and them now at least listening and being like, oh, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really know that or we didn't know you felt like that. And I think it's about like now as we get older, it's about not being afraid to have these conversations. Of course, I think that there's always going to be like limitations and boundaries, at least in my family, but I think that's okay. I think we can reach a a middle point where I'm like, I'm comfortable in who I am. It took me a long time to get here and I'm still changing. But like, like I tell my parents, like, ultimately, like I'm, I'm my own person. I'm my own adult. And I always tell them like, my religion is my religion. Like my traditional values are my values. My morals are my morals. And I always say like, you gave me a lot of these things when I started out growing, you know, when I was born and when I grew up. But I think 
I don't think I would be able to be who I am now if I didn't understand that was okay. Because I think, as I said, a lot of me growing up was a lot of guilt about not being the person I thought my parents wanted me to be, or my culture told me I should be, or what my religion told me was appropriate, or all these sort of things. And I think when I say this, a lot of times if people are like, what are you saying? You don't like being Arab? I'm like, no, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that all cultures and all religions and all traditions come with a whole lot of shit. Yeah. And for me, this was my shit. Like, mm-hmm. these are the things that, that, you know, were prevalent growing up and being told to me, you know, and a lot of it, I didn't, it took me a long time to realize I didn't agree with it or I thought differently. And um, now I'm like, it's okay. Because I think I realized I've reached like this place of appreciation and love for where I come from, where my parents come from, for the religion I was, you know, I grew up in, um, for the culture I'm part of, like so much. Like I, like now I read like Arabic books and I listen, the last few years I really got into Arabic music and Arabic art and like Muslim art and like, you know, Asian art. And I think that in, in high school and in college, I was like, kind of, but not really. I think now because I'm like, I'm comfortable in my skin. I can actually love these things because before I tried to push myself away from them. Yeah. So. I think, you know, it's, it's actually fascinating to me because you are expressing like you so identify with being like Arab American and, and Muslim and trying to figure out like your place in it. And you're really working through it in your work and you can see it. And in, in one aspect, you know, it's like you, you don't want to say like more or less or right or wrong, but it's like, you're really doing the work, you know, you're not, um, you're not reading or you're not being taught a lesson and accepting it at face value. You know, you're really diving deeper into, into the work and into your culture and into your background. And even just, you know, your story about like sort of seeing a woman up on a balcony and her having her clothes out and how it like actually struck you in a more like spiritual place that you needed to take a picture of it and capture it. And that's a part of you. Like that woman is a part of you. Like that is such a beautiful message. And you know, I think it's something that a lot of people probably are still working through. There's maybe some people who haven't even like hit the surface or tapped into yeah. it. Um, you know, I'm Jewish. And so for me, it's been the same thing of my parents teaching me a certain way of how to do things. And I think if I did it wrong, I was wrong or I was less Jewish yeah. or I didn't identify or I was being disrespectful. And I think that it's been a long, uh, like, you know, process to discover in myself that, um, it's not wrong. It's my way. It's my way of identifying. And I think that if I'm identifying in this way or expressing myself in this way, then there must be other people out there like that too. And it's just giving them the chance and the validation to, to explore in their own way as well. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like you're diving deeper into your culture or your religion or your upbringing than the people you don't want to say no like, totally you don't say more or less but it's 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 a different perspective of um you know going into your background and your heritage and your culture yeah i i totally agree with that and i think that like you said it's not like you're saying everybody or right or wrong or whatever we're not like pointing fingers but i definitely think that for me there's a lot that i've learned because i did like you said i was like i'm going to read about the books. I'm going to do the research. I'm going to do all these things that I think a lot of people, when they grow up in any culture or in any country, like take at face value. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's, I mean, we're all victim to it, you know? And I think for me, if I didn't feel this, like, almost like uncomfortable, these uncomfortable feelings or like this almost like distress growing up, I don't know if I would have done that, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of. And I think that it doesn't just apply to me. And like you said, like you can be from any other background, like you're Jewish, but you feel similar things. Like, I Mm -hmm. think that it's like applicable. And I think that to people like us who grew up with like these expectations that are attached to traditions or cultures or religions, um, it can be really hard to break through. And then I think that when you do though, it's like, it's a, it's like a Hail Mary moment. You're like, holy shit. Yep. Like, okay, it's a process. I'm going to keep working, but like, I see the light. Totally. It really is like creating the path for a new generation. And what I love is that you apply it to your work. Like you apply it to your personal work in, in a way that's so beautiful that it inspires others to take a different look or a different perspective at, at their culture and their upbringing as well, you know? And like you said, you've made so many connections. So it's like, who knows how many lives you've changed by 
sticking true to your vision and what you believe in and almost sort of, you know, showing your parents that there could be a different way, a different way to practice and to be proud. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's hard Yeah, because I think my parents, I don't think my parents are not proud of me. I do think though, I mean, families are very different and I've heard people's families who are like obsessed with their kids. They're like, they're like, oh, my dad, my parents are always like, good job. You're amazing. I'm like, we did not grow up like that. My parents never were like, you know, if I got an A, my parents would be like, you're expected to get an A. You know, my parents were just not, they're not, as I said, they're great parents, but they're not the type of parents that were like overly enthusiastic. My parents weren't the type of parents that were like, follow your dreams. No, definitely not. No. But I think now they have more understanding and appreciation of me than they ever did. Um, because it's kind of crazy to think I'm like, okay, I'm here in New York and they always were like, are you really going to, why would you go there? Like, can you do that? Like, it's not that easy. And now that I'm here, I almost feel like they're like, oh shit. Okay. She did it. Like she's, <laughs> yeah. like, she's fine. Like yeah. she didn't die. You know, mm-hmm. like she's not like melting. She's not mm-hmm. like in need of support. Like, like she's okay. So I think them actually being able to see it versus me saying things and just being like, it'll be fine. Trust me. And then them seeing like, it's fine. And not only is it fine, I'm actually doing things that I enjoy. I think for them was like, okay, like mad props, like we respect you now, you know, like I didn't go to law school. I didn't go, I didn't get married to some rich, I'm not saying anyone does that, but like, I'm just thinking of all the other cases, scenarios. Like I didn't end up doing that. I ended up doing what I wanted for me. And I just feel like now they respect me more because of it. Yeah. It's such a valuable takeaway because I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like, um, you know, sort of a a process in and of itself like you have to disconnect from your parents or from your family or from almost like it's you have to create your own autonomy and I think that when you do it successfully in your own way um it's it's impossible to not admire that yeah agree and for anyone right like I totally agree with that yeah is there any I mean I know like you've obviously overcome many obstacles and challenges along the way. Is there any advice that you would give, um, whether or not it's like an Arab American girl coming up after you or whether or not it's just a creative, like, is there any advice or, you know, one thing that you can touch on or share, um, that really helped you along your journey? That's, that's a good question. I almost think that I wish I had someone who could have helped me, uh, And I think that um, if I were to look at somebody else, because I think that a big part of the things that I do, I hope that I send that message, right? To, like you said, whether if it's not an Arab American girl, maybe it's just a girl that like, Mm -hmm. you don't have to be told these things. You don't have to do what people are telling you to do. You don't need an X, Y, Z person to come save you. Like, no, Mm -hmm. I think that I wish, or I hope to inspire people to, first of all, know that like doing, having a path in something creative is not the wrong, is not a wrong path. I think that we have to be realistic. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not some, I'm a very practical person. I'm not saying that like you, you know, I mean, maybe you can, but like for me, I could never be someone who's like, I'm just going to move somewhere and like everything's going to work out and I'm just going to sell my photos on the street. Like, I'm not that type of person. I think that there has to be practicality. Like you have to like have goals. You have to like you know, work, you have to have money. Like I'm, 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 I'm still someone who believes in that. I just think that like have these goals, be a practical person, but don't think that they're impossible. And I just wish that like someone had told me that like, if you keep working, like it'll be fine. And I think that a lot of times I was just like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not talented enough because I didn't feel talented enough. And I couldn't find a job in something I wanted. And like, nobody wanted to hire me. And I was like, why the hell? Like, I'm like, I'm not, I suck. And I think then like people around you are going to, you mean your friends are going to support you, but then other people are going to be like, yeah, see, you should have gone and like your career choice is like stupid. Like your career choice, like doesn't, you don't have jobs. Like you're not going to have money. And I just think that I hope that like someone sees me and they're just like, okay, she's done it. Like I can do it. Like, I hope that one day, like my life goal is to move back or move to Lebanon or wherever else. And like, somehow help people like me or who are in a less fortunate position and give them the tools to be creative, whether that's like a camera or like provide a space or a photo studio or like help girls to reach their creative potential. Like, I think that's the ultimate goal. And I think 
maybe it's because I wish I had someone when I was growing up. Um, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's definitely like the foundation for Ola Guapa is like, I wanted to create a place where these conversations were being had because I wish I had been able to listen to them when I was, when I was younger, you know, and it's like, I still want to listen to them. (laughs) So, um, I, I totally hear you. I think, you know, a constant theme is trying to figure out, um, that secret sauce, you know, that secret recipe to success. And ultimately what I've heard time and time again is just consistent, consistency and hard work. Consistency, hard work, and just like not, I'm, not being afraid to have a goal, but also like, if you don't reach it at the time that you were meant to reach it, like, don't freak out. Like, I think for me, it was always like, at this point, I'm going to have this done. I should be here in six months. And I realized like, none of that should happen for me. And then everything kind of just fell into place when it was meant to. And just like trust in the universe. Like that sounds so like hokey pokey, but like, if you're putting in the work, you're doing all that you can, you're trying your hardest, you're like doing what you love, you're being creative. I think that things will just eventually fall into place when they're meant to. I'm like, don't be lazy, but like, you know, (laughs) if you have the vision and I think that if you're practicing and you're working hard, like, I think it works out. I I really believe in that. Um, And I think that I was just an example of that where I just was like, I didn't think that I would ever be here, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, your story is super inspiring and I'm super, you know, excited to launch this episode and I I love sharing your story and I can't wait for the Ola Guapo community to see your work. I know you did like a written feature a while back, but, um, I did, this is a totally different way, way to share you and your story and your journey and how far you've come in two years. So, um, this has been a Crazy, really great yeah. conversation and I'm, I'm so happy to have had you on. Thank you. Like this, I mean, I love always talking with you and like, I think what you're doing is great and I just hope you never stop because I think your platform is a platform that, like you said, we're, we've been looking for, we need, um, and I just hope you keep doing it. <laughs> Definitely forever. <laughs> Ola Guapa forever. forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Dahlia. I hope you gained as much value and inspiration from her story as I did. If you love what you heard, please make sure to rate and review this episode on Apple Music and or Spotify. With that, have a beautiful week, Guapas. And as always, I'm sending you tons of inspiration and lots and lots of love.